So in this session, I'll demonstrate some of the latest imaging features available in discovery fluids. First of all, I'd like to show you how to set up, uh, run a rotating fluid zone in NC discovery and how to post-process the results using available ocean options. So as you know, NC discovery is a powerful simulation tool to allow engineers to design and optimize product faster and more efficiently. So to begin with, uh, let's open up NC discovery and create a new project. As you can see from my screen, I have a mixing tank with baffles, with eight baffles, and the agitator at the bottom, which is highlighted or colored in green color. So next, select the fluid flow option from here and define your rotating free zone. After, in this case, the rotating, rotating free zone is obviously the green region which is the agitator. And then after confirming all your setups on the left, you can see here we have the structure tree and the settings. In this simulation, I'm using water as my liquid type, and you can also set up the rotating speed and axis. After checking everything, you can hit solve to run the simulation. So you can see in speed second, I already have the results. And once the simulation is co complete, you can begin post-processing the, post the results. And you know, NC Discovery actually provides a variety of tools to help you visualize and interpret your results. For example, you can use Vector, which, what the, which are the options they're currently using, or Light Integral Convolution, which is this one, to see how the fluid flows through your system and how it interacts with rotating components. Vector visualization is a great way to see the direction and magnitude of the fluid flow. Or line integral correlation, it can be used to highlight vortex structures and other important features. These tools can help you to optimize your design and improve the performance of your system. For example, you may use the vector visualization to see if there are any areas of high turbulence or recirculation that are reducing the performance of your system. Alternatively, you can use the line integral convolution to identify the location and size of vortices, which can have significant impact on the efficiency. And as you can see from here, there's actually a dead zones between the baffle and the lower sections. So you know some of some changes have to be made to the models to increase the performance. Besides that, you can also transfer your project into Fluent for simulating more complex physics, such as multiple fluids, chemical reactions, transient, etc. How to do so? Simply click the Fluent icon in the transfer section. This time, I would like to introduce a new feature and David has mentioned it before, which is the addition of GPU solver. To enable GPU solver, simply just check this box in the Fluent Launcher, this native GPU solver, and you can enable it. And once the Fluent is open, check your settings in case you need to modify them, or else you can just initialize and run the calculation. A uh, quick note, with GPU server, I actually got this results in about three minutes. Well, usually it'd be four calls, it'll take about eight to nine minutes. So it's actually three times or three times more faster. So in Fluent as well, you can use the results you can view the results in different methods such as contour, vectors, or the LICs, which is the line integral convolutions. You can also set up the animations. You can also set up the animations to provide better visualizations and for generating a more impressive reports, I say. So that's conclude my first demonstration for rotating free zone. The next I would like to show is transient simulation. As you know, transient simulation is a powerful tool that allows engineers to simulate dynamic systems where conditions change over time. So this is particularly useful for simulating systems that involve fluid flow, where the flow behavior can change as the system operates. So in this simulation, I have two inlet flows. You can see the hot water from the, from the top which is at 50 degrees Celsius, and the cold water is at the side, which is 25 degrees Celsius. So both liquids will be mixing in the mixing key. 
and you will see how the temperature of the combined flow changes. To set up a transient simulation and see discovery, what you need to do first is to, under the simulation options, change the uh, calculation type into time dependent. The simulation duration can be specified in seconds. You can see in the second option, the simulation duration can be specified in seconds, minutes, hours, or any other time you need that's appropriate for a system. So during the simulation, the simulation duration, you can see from my cursor, the simulation duration will be shown in the control legend. So you can easily monitor the progress of the simulation. However, if you want to run the simulation infinitely, simply uncheck the specified simulation duration. So once the simulation is complete, or you reach the desired time duration, you can use, you can post process the results I mentioned before using the available visualization tools to gain insights into the behavior of your flu of the fluid in your system. So as you can see, the mixing conditions is actually quite concerning, is it? Yeah, you can see the the mixing condition is actually not that good. As because you can see the mostly the outlet flow is mostly cold. So to improve the mixing, maybe you can add in some baffles or obstructions to increase the turbulence. And there are also another latest feature they would like to introduce, which are the which is the transient conjugate heat transfer and updates in thermal conductance specifications. The transient simulation does not only apply to the fluid flow, but as well as the heat transfer to the solid. So let me go back to contour. As you can see, the initial temperature of the mixing key at the settings is supposed to at 22 degrees Celsius. But as the simulations go on, it's now increasing gradually from the insides. And let me zoom in to this, to the mixing key that's near to the hot inlet. You can see from the contour, the temperature of this mixing key, of this region is about 30 degrees Celsius. So it's actually increased from 22. Besides, I also mentioned the thermal conductance specifications, right? Let me zoom. Yeah. So in 2023 R1, there's a new option to compute thermal conductance from thickness and material for bonded contacts and fluid solid inter interface. And how do you do that? First, simply select the bonded contacts or the interfaces. In this case, it will be the fluid solid interface which is this, right click at edit, next create this double arrow to expand the additional options, enable specified thermal conductance, and you can key in the value for thermal conductance, or you can specify the thickness at all and material. So imagine if they are falling in happy inside or their internal coatings to prevent corrosion between the fluid solid interface, so the thermal conductance will obviously be different. The heating project is actually to simulate the heat transfer from the heat source at the bottom. You can see this tiny box of this tiny solid is the heat source and the above fins is the heat sink. So the heat transfer will be from the bottom to the top. And we are going to simulate how the heat is transferring, the how, how the heat transfer rate will be. So first, I would like to change the thermal conductance properties using the latest features I mentioned before, which is the specified thermal conductance. In this case, is the bonded contacts. Select it and edit. Click this double arrow. And in I'll, I'll, I'll be running two trials. After that. We're running two trials. The first trial I'll be using is a uh, material called thermal interface material, TMM. A quick note, this TMM material, this material is actually a self-defined material. So of course, NC Discovery allows you to define your own material. And anyway, let's just keep soft and see how the result will be. You can see the, the simulation redone and we get our result. The maximum, the maximum temperature is at 59.4 degrees Celsius. So next I will change the 
material of the bonded convex into, let's say, maybe alumina. Yes, I guess. Yes, alumina. So as you realize, I didn't actually pause the simulation from the first trial. So the simulation will automatically restart. And you can see the maximum temperature actually reduced to 48.3. If you want to compare both trials, the result of both trials, under you can actually under uh, select the monitor options or monitor features under this under the this button. You can see in the first trial, we have the maximum temperature of 59.4 degrees Celsius. And in the second trial, with, with changing the material to alumina, the temperature reduced to 48.3 uh, degrees Celsius. So by changing the contact to more heat conductive material, the heat transfer is obviously greatly improved. But you know, alumina is actually more expensive and fragile. So it's the matter for the engineers to decide. So in conclusion, I would say NC Discovery offers a variety of powerful simulation tools, including rotating free zone, uh, transient simulation, and specified thermal conductors. So by using these tools, engineers can gain a more comprehensive understanding into the behavior of the system and optimize their designs for better performance.